Welcome back everybody to another action figure review. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at an offering from Toy Alliance. This is part of their Acid Rain line, the last line of defense, the Interceptor Camelbot. HR-52E, he is part of the, of the stealth team. This figure is identified as FAV-A30. FAV stands for figure in a vehicle. This is a 118, 118 scale action figure and it comes in this collector's box. As you can see on the front of the box it has a very nice artwork. So let's take a look at the packaging real quick. We have the Acerain here on the top left. Last line of defense on the top. Interceptor Camelbot. Stealth logo I believe. Here is a FAV A30. Toy Lance logo. Looks really nice. Top of the box, we just have the Acid Rain logo, and it says the war under pollution. Side of this box, we have the uh, toy lines here. Then we have the Interceptor Camelbot, HR-52E, and we have the Stealth logo. These are made in China. Here's the UPC. We have the Acid Rain logo, the Stealth logo. The back of the packaging shows the camel bot and all of his accessories. Uh, it says 118 scale military infantry unit, fully weathered detail, highly com completed action collectibles, interchangeable weapons and accessories, one action figure included. Then we have the Acid Rain website, Toy Alliance. Then we have a warning this is not a toy. Recommended for a minimum of eight, um, 16 and up. And there are choking hazards, small parts, not for children on the age of three. So these are for these are collectibles, and they are for more for your adults. Um, but you know, you're you're the parent. You can buy whatever you want for your kids. Just be careful of small parts. So let's go ahead and get him out of the box and see what he looks like. Let's get my pallet out of the way. Fortunately, uh, as you can see, he does not come with any of the nice figure crates we're used to seeing with our uh, action figures. He is in two clam shells. Here's this one, the Camelbot figure. And then we have a weapons clam shell. And other accessories, obviously. And we have a baggie with some kind of product insert or instructions. We will take a look at all this in this video. So let's go ahead and take out the uh, Camelbot. So we have tape on both sides of the packaging. Easy defeated. He has the plastic around the figure which is nice. Help protect the paint. Very cool. Okay here is the Interceptor Camelbot outside the packaging. He looks fantastic. Beautiful paint, beautiful weathering. Looks really cool. He's actually very tall compared to most 118 scale figures, but this is definitely a 118 scale action figure. Wow. Let's take a look at that head sculpt. Very unique robotic looking head. Very cool. Very nicely weathered and detailed. Has a little bit of that red on the top. Some silver here on the neck. We have three pouches across the chest. And in fact we have the logo on his chest. That is very small. Very nice. So we have a pouch here on the side. Pouch on that side. On his shoulder pads we have the 15 stealth. Looks very cool. We have the red on the bottom. Looks amazingly detailed and weathered. And that's both sides. Look at this. We even have like these screws. Very nice sculpt work. On the shoulder pads there. Looks incredible. So here's his arms. We have uh, 
a lot of greys and blacks with the that that weathered look throughout here on his back of his arm he has his other um I'm gonna call it a hoof because the trans form, if that's the correct term, into a more of a dog-like position. So he has those on the back of his arms to put him in that position. We'll take a look at that here in this video also. So you want to stay tuned. Very nice detail on the waist. We have some silver inside here of his leg on his thighs. Give us some nice cybernetic looking or robot looking. Pretty nice sculpting on his lower legs. So it's like some kind of maybe could look like a piston or something. Those feet look really cool. Makes you think of like maybe dinosaur feet. It looks really really good. So let's take a three look, uh, three sixty look at this figure because he looks fantastic. The back of him looks great. This piece here, I believe, is so you can connect the backpack. Um, pieces on. So we have some silver here on the back of his arms. A cylinder here, back of his waist. Works really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at his articulation um, for his head. Um, let's see, we have. This is very stiff. So we have a rotation 360 all the way around, no problem. He does look up pretty incredibly. He looks down. Uh, it's a little bit side to side, not much. And he has neck articulation. It goes all the way up because of his um, alternate form. Ford. And then you can go at any stationary level that you decide you would, you would like. Uh, his arms, they kind of uh, flow in and out. Not too bad. Did he raise up uh, that far with the shoulder pads on? These are removable quite easily. Well, the whole piece. Come right off or actually see you can take them off that way or off this way also that is the first time they came off like that it's very cool but if you you can spin them also if you like and they get more of a range for his arms looks really nice then we have articulation here just above the bicep you get 360 if you can get past that but you just got to maneuver your parts around. Um, there's no twist at the elbow, but you do have bendable elbows, which is <laughs> wow, this is pretty incredible. You pretty much can fold him up like a transformer. That's that's insane amount of articulation. Look at that 100%, 360 degrees almost. Very cool. Uh, let's see, we have the hand, rotates 360. Then we have a, uh, an in and a little bit out joint there. This is also the same articulation on that side. Then, of course, these come down. And we'll take a more of a look. This rotates all the way around, just for reference. So let's get his hands up out of the way. That was incredible articulation for the elbows. That was incredible. Uh, we have an ab crunch. Back. Down. And don't feel this side to side. Of course, it, it will rotate, I believe. This vest here is removable. It's quite tight. It must like it wants to turn, but I'm not going to force it. Um, for his legs, he will sit like a champ. No problem. It's a little tight. You might want to take the heat gun to this thing. But he looks really good. Feels good too. The materials feel great. Nice plastic. Doesn't feel like it's going to break. 
Um, so he has a lot of articulation in his legs. He's articulated here. He's articulated there. He's articulated here. That's a 360 turn. And I think you can do a, yeah, you can do a side to side on these. See how that's cut like that? And then these can do, his ankles can pivot up, pivot down, and obviously 360 turn. So there is a lot of articulation in his legs. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it because we're going to take a look at that here when we attempt to transform him into his other mode. So we have a lot to get to. And we are going to move forward after the articulation, but he has loads loads of articulation super cool so let's take a look at some of his accessories so we have the accessory clamshell we have tape on it also let's see what we got usually if you take off the one side you don't have to worry about on tape the other side doesn't matter we have a baggie here another baggie and a small baggie with some kind of small parts in all right. Okay, in the first bag we had this very large machine gun. Wow, this is huge. Just to give you an idea how big it is. So almost as tall as the character. Almost. Okay, this thing is beautifully sculpted. Barrel is drawn out. We have a handle that swivels, which is cool. Actually, goes side to side too. Very nicely articulated. So we have a strap that's connected under the handle, and apparently it goes somewhere else on the gun. Very nice. And let's see, what's this? Oh, look at this. We have another handle for right here underneath that it folds out. Looks really good. Wow, I've not seen any human hole in this weapon. This is huge. And then we have this side. At the back we have the handles. Then we have a clip. Let's see. Oh, it's removable. Looks like we have a gold or a copper round inside there. Painted very nicely. That's really cool. Very nice details for this gun. Very, very nice. Make sure we orient that correctly because we want to make sure the round goes through the barrel. For realism. Fold that back down. Looks really good. I'm not sure where the other end of this strap goes. Let's see if we find something in the instructions or whatnot. And then we have this rack that apparently goes on his back. Nicely painted. It's a gray with a heavy weathering type. Next up he has this incredibly detailed backpack. Looks fantastic. Love the sculpt on this. We have the red here on top of the pouches. We have two pouches on the side with the red. Here we have a pig. Two, two posts. This side has two pouches. And these seem to move a little bit. And it looks like we have two extra ammo clips that's stored in his backpack. That's really cool. That's pretty stiff. Held by friction. Not too bad. Very nice detail. These are movable though. Flexible. Very nice. And then we have these two pieces. I am not sure what those are for. Could be for the gun or replacement joints. Don't know. We'll have to see what we can find in the instructions that tells us what this is. If anybody knows, please comment down below. Let me know if we don't find it in this video. Awesome. And we get this alternate head. This is awesome. 
have that same red on the top of there. His bottom jaw is more of a silver, it's like a cybernetic type head or helmet. His eyes are silver, like they're free floating. That looks really, really evil. Side of his head looks cool. It looks like a cybernetic helmet. There's a device on the back. This is actually for the uh, Ajax figure. We're just, we'll be taking a look at that here upcoming review. So we'll take a look at the difference in the head sculpts for that figure. So this is an instruction sheet you get. It has on the top right we have the contents. It shows all the articulation I believe here. Uh, we can take a look at that gun to see how I put that strap on. Some other stuff and some basic transformation uh, it's pretty basic some cautions some toy lines information nothing on the back let's take a look so if you take this piece you can take this piece and it needs to be mounted onto here before you can put it on a camel bot so basically we have these two pieces here and a peg so we want to put this is towards the top, this piece. So put that through that hole right there. And then this bar or pop between those two, two pieces right there. I'm not gonna do it because I wanna get to stick this rack on before um, to help put it on a camel bot. Well, I guess I could. And then if you take your camel bot, and you locate the back of this. You want to look. Okay, so you have two horizontal and two vertical clips. So this will be towards the bottom here. And then these two is these two. So you just want to push those on like so. And that's how that would fit. You know, the right, and he can stand holding. It actually adds some weight to the figure, but he can actually stand and hold that pretty good. Looks really, really cool. All right. So according to the instructions, we want to slide this gun to the side to get it in that same position. It looks like basically this just goes around one of the handles the best that I can tell like so because it's kind of in that same position laying on their table oh this is just turned but it's the same thing so the best I can tell that's how that goes on so he can hold the gun pretty nicely with the amazing articulation in the arms and the uh, the way that handle on the gun can rotate from top to the side and then rotate 360 you can pretty much get him in any awesome position for that gun. I think it's huge. Holds it really really well. Looks very cool. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take some time here and see if we can get this guy in his alternate mode. First, you're gonna come back here to his head, push it all the way back and bring his head all the way up like that. Um, I'm gonna have to move the vest around a little bit to get his head to go all the way back like so. Next, you just wanna bring his arm forward and what we want to do is turn this to where his hands down. And then we want to bring this all the way forward. And then the hand should seat in there. No problem. And then you're going to run to rotate the two hooves to the front. And we'll get that more of a uh, sitting position once we get him in his... Uh, because you have to fine tune it once you get it 
He's got that joint right there. Don't try to get his front legs positioned correctly. Then you can bend the, uh, the elbows here to find your perfect seating. Kind of find help that if you put it down on the ground, you can uh, help manipulate that just a little bit better. It kind of looks like kind of like that so far. Okay, for his legs, we're going to do some, there's a lot of articulation in his legs, so we're going to bring one leg down, like so. Then we're going to bend it here, and then we're going to bend it here, like that. And then we have his foot here that we can spin to wherever you like. So you want to get like that broken leg look. So come straight down, bend, come over here, which kind of goes in like a more of an up type position over here, bend down. And you're gonna do that for both legs. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, and there he is. And it's not too bad. The instructions aren't too bad. They're black and white, kind of basic, not too much, but uh, kind of gives you the idea. So that's how the hind legs should work. This is from behind, the other side, and then you know, once you get him in about that position, put him down on a table, and then you can get him, like he's perfectly level, all fours are flatly on the table, and you can tweak it however you see fit, or however you, you need. Now he's more in like a, kind of looks like a dog, like a robot dog. He looks really cool. It doesn't look like a camel to me, but I get the idea. It's just basically a bot to carry your your, your uh, equipment in a bottle that's probably too heavy for you. And then after that, you can go ahead and put on the rack that we already discussed. So I'm going to throw that on so you guys can see what that looks like. So I've already showed you how to put that on, and I'll be right back. Okay, there he is with the... Uh, extra equipment on his back in his second alternate form looks really cool it doesn't show anywhere where you can carry his you know the uh, the large machine gun in the alt mode of course you probably find someone to strap it on if you really wanted to uh to do that it'd been really nice i'm not sure what these are for so I got two of these I don't know if there are you would think if there was an attachment for the gun for him to hold why is in this position I don't know nothing in the instructions nothing on the box hmm they still got like replacement joint pieces but I could be wrong Yeah, I don't see anything on this instruction sheet for these two pieces. When I first seen those pieces, I really thought they were placement joints. Let me get this off. One thing to note is when you start manipulating these legs, as you can see here, there are only put on these posts. If you can help get that the light to work for it. Yeah, see right there, they're just on post. I kind of thought maybe those are replacements, just in case they broke. But in that same kind of ball almost, but I don't know where this piece goes because that ball goes right into the leg. I'm not too sure. So if anybody knows what those pieces are, I'd really appreciate it. Help me out, help out the community, let them know that uh, what those are for. Um, there's nothing in the instructions, unfortunately, on the box. Uh, Maybe I'll do my own research and see if I can find if anybody's sending about them and put it in our Ajax video coming up. So uh, keep that in mind. So let's take a look how it compares with uh, Celine in the uh, alt mode, we're calling it. So she looks fantastic. Could be like her pet robot or something, I don't know.
Very cool. I'm not sure if she can ride him or not. Yeah, I mean, if you already fine tune it, she can probably, <laughs> if she got hurt in battle, she, you know, he can get her out of her quickly. Which nice about the camel bots, you know, you pick these up for all, all your universes, and then, you know, if you play with your figures and you put them in other universes, you can use it for different things. Like the camel bots can get you, get geared to where a vehicle can't, like a, a world vehicle. Obviously, you can drop anything from from the sky, but if you don't have that op option because of, you know, anti-aircraft artillery or whatever, you can just have those things run in, climb the mountains, scale the rocks, whatever, get ammo to your troops or other supplies. They're really cool to add to your mythology of your action figure um, storylines. All right, just for fun, let's do a... <laughs> Really interesting comparison. Here is the Kawiki from Vitruvian Hacks. Hey, looks pretty cool. That's how he compares. If you're interested, who knows? You never know what's going to pop up in our videos. So I'm going to go ahead and get him back into uh, bot mode and we'll do some comparisons with Celine and maybe something else to see how well he scales with them. He's definitely taller and See what else we can get into. Okay, here he is with uh, back in his bot mode, and we'll take a look how he compares with Celine. As you can see, he does tower over her. He is actually very tall. Um, his box versus her box, pretty much the same size. So we get, but he's definitely a larger figure. They look fantastic together really really cool and then when if you add the hs character with this helmet that's going to be an awesome looking three man female team so for another comparison we have uh let's do master chief because he is one of the bigger 118 scale figures because of his uh seven foot tall stature and the camel bot towers over him also Looks really, really cool. Okay, so take him out. And here he is with uh, a G.I. Joe figure, a modern G.I. Joe figure, Stone Shadow. And the, tower, the camel bot towers over him also. It's incredible. And here he is with a Cobra Bat, a Battle Android Trooper. Pretty cool. Colors don't match, but. Just for scale, looks good. And I'm sure everybody's wondering how he looks with a Toy Toy figure and how he scales. He scales fantastically. And here, how he scales with some of those barriers for Massive Rain Line. Looks pretty cool. And if you can shut these, you can stand on other. That's how he scales behind there. Looks really cool. All right, so talk about my final thoughts. Uh, fantastic figure, materials feel great. Um, this watch in her hand on some of the, of the figures when you first get it, like hold closer to the joints. Like when you're manipulating this piece, don't just pull from here and put all the stress. Come down close as you can to the joints and pull it out. And watch these joints here on the hips. Um, don't use too much force. So they get uh, you working a little bit from several transformations, but overall it's super cool. It looks fantastic with Celine. Um, if you have all the stealth team stuff, you know it's gonna look really cool on your shelf. Price this is really pricey um, for an action figure. He's up right around seventy five dollars in the United States. Um, and then I don't know where you get it from China. You might get it a couple bucks cheaper, but you gotta pay the shipping. Made this even out, but he's definitely on a pricey side. So definitely check your reviews on some of these more expensive figures. So it's nice about these these reviews. So you might, you know, if you want to, can, please consider subscribing to my channel so you can check it out before you buy, and that's a great option for you. 
please like and share the video and uh, comment down below if you have any comments any questions uh, thanks for watching and we will see you in our next review